All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome to today's sketch grind. So glad you're here this morning. We're going to get better at drawing. And um, let's jump in. So, whoops, turn that off. All right. So, um, first off, uh, I want to introduce Caleb. Caleb is going to be helping me moderate the chat. Go ahead and say hi. Hey, everybody. So he's going to be reading off questions for me so I don't have to stop every time I answer a question. I can just keep drawing. Um, he'll also be moderating the chat and answering questions like what the prompt is and um, things like that. Um, links to the Facebook group. So if you have any questions of that nature, you can direct them towards Caleb. Um, but yeah, so today's prompt is going to be... Um, to draw the queen of blank so not last some of the time before we did the king of blank now we're doing the queen of blank and as usual we're going to start with a 10 minutes of warm-up to get us going and then we will jump into our sketches so let's get going oh also i got rid of the music because i had some reports that it was not sounding very good um since it was just being recorded through the mic and not being produced through the live stream. Um, I don't know, we'll see if we can figure out an alternative so it sounds better, but um, yeah, it just wasn't sounding very good. So anyways, let's uh, let's get started with our with our warm-ups. Once again, if you have any questions, you can throw them in the chat and Caleb will, Caleb will read them off to me and um, let me know what it is you guys are asking, so. All right, so I have a question for you. Sayoko says, I really love the art of the Anis from The Rising Sun. If I take your digital painting lesson, will it help me achieve that? Um, it That painting style is, is different than what I teach in the digital painting classes I teach, but I do think it will still help you as regards to understanding lighting and stuff. The way that um, that guy, his name is, um, if I can remember, shoot, I just forgot it. Um, he does the hate novel, the hate comic books. Oh, his name is right, oh, whoops, sorry, on the box. I can't remember his name. Um, maybe you can Google it for yeah. me, Caleb. Just look up Rising Sun, the artist for Rising Sun. Um, anyways, that guy, the way that he does his art is um, he... Uh, he does the whole entire thing in black and white first and makes it really basically exactly how it's going to be just in black and white, gets all the values perfect. And then he uses color layers to add color on top of that and colorize the whole thing. Um, that is not the style that I teach in my digital painting course, but I would say there's a lot of applicable stuff that would like for example like the lighting and stuff like that i think you could learn some valuable things as well as like the underdrawing stuff and you don't have to paint it exactly like him you in fact you kind of don't want to otherwise you would just look like you're copying him um what i would take from his paintings is the design characteristics not so much the technique because you don't just want to copy his style exactly but take note of like some of the design choices he made and think about like how you could possibly apply some of that. And um, cause the thing I like about his is they look really realistic, but they also have a very, um, I don't know, like they, they look clearly reminiscent of like traditional Japanese art of Oni. They're not like so stylized to the point where they look really modern. They look like how you would expect Japanese Oni to look based off of the lore and the mythology. Did you find the name of that guy? Um, yeah, I think so. It looks like it's Eric Lang. Yeah, no, that's the Eric Lang is the guy who designed the game. Um, but the artist is, I can't believe I forgot his name. He's one of my favorite artists. Um, look, um, what, what should I look up? Try looking up Hate, the comic book or graphic novel. Hate, H A T E? Yeah. Graphic novel.
Adrian Smith. There we go, Adrian Smith. Yep, um, that's what's by Adrian Smith. So um, his style is yeah, he does it in black and white first, and then adds color. And but like I said, I don't think you need to focus so much on the exact painting technique. I mean, you can if you want. You can apply some of that, but um, it's not. There's nothing wrong with that, but. I would look at some of his design choices and consider that. So. So I've got another question here, my from Myrie Love, but I'm not sure how to pronounce it. There he say, or they're saying PewDiePie. Or PewDiePie, series? Or uh, series, yeah. Are, is that even a question? Are you joking me, man? PewDiePie, and if you haven't subscribed to PewDiePie, you guys better get on that and do that. Otherwise, uh, you know what? Just get get right out of my live stream you know <laughs> pewdiepie all the way we got stop t-series good question Anyone have any good suggestions today for um, the Queen of Queen of Blank? What are you guys gonna draw? I see Queen Frog. Queen Frog, maybe we did King Frog. Kind of want to do something like complimentary, but not just like the same thing. Like maybe. Uh, I don't know, snakes, queen of snakes instead. Honey Sirachi says queen snakes is good. Yeah, we might do that unless we can think of a better one. We'll see. Can you guys hear Caleb on the mic? Queen whale. Queen of the whales. They say yes. Okay. Sayoko did some studies of a chimpanzee and a hippo. Oh, good job. Was it as bad as you thought it was going to be? Because you were saying that you were worried that it would make you give up on drawing because you <laughs> would hate doing studies. Or did you find it was tolerable? While uh, Sayoko is answering that question, we've got other suggestions. Queen Whale. How about you draw Hype Beast Penguin? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> Queen Tiger. Queen of the Swamp. Queen of the Swamp. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Queen Wasp. Ooh, that's gross and creepy. This is my take on Oni for my <laughs> warm-up. Seiko so said, uh, not at all. They were pretty accurate. I'm so much more confident in stepping out of my comfort zone. Oh, that's awesome. Way to go. Yeah, I would start doing a ton of those. I would do that uh, every day. Um, and you'll be pretty amazed with how much it starts to influence your sketches and drawings that you do from your head once you start drawing from reference.
So for Innocent Midget and anybody else who's just joining in now, the sketch for today is going to be the queen of blank. So that's why everyone's talking about queens. Queen of the sea cows. How about that one? That's interesting. <laughs> Queen sloth. Ooh. I think maybe we should make warm-up sketch time five minutes instead of ten minutes because I always feel like, wow, this is going on for a long time. And then when we do the actual sketches, I'm like, there's not enough time. Extra five minutes. But usually happens, I look at the clock, I'm like, oh, we got 30 minutes left. Okay, cool, we got plenty of time. And then the next one, I look at the clock, I'm like, whoa, we're almost out of time. Oh, there we go. There's timer. All right. Um, I think what I'm going to do for my queen sketch is, I think I am going to go with queen of snakes because that's so well. There, there's queen spider and queen deer also that just came in. Mm, I also kind of like the queen of sloths. I don't know. Just ever since we did the reference one yesterday, I just realized how rusty my kind of mental reference library is. And I just don't feel confident that I'm going to be able to reproduce all the stuff in my head the way I want it. Um, I don't like looking pictures? at pictures. You know? Maybe I don't really like looking up reference in the middle of the live stream. Cause then everyone just has to wait. I should have brought that prepared. Look it up for you. No, nah, it's fine. Okay. Let's just do a. Uh, um, Hyena lion. Sakubi so Queen, I don't know what that is. Sounds cool. Let's do. The Queen of. I'm going to do the Queen of. Oni, just because that's what I was drawing, and that kind of sounds. Nah, I don't want to do the Sloth, anyway. sloth is coming from George French. Uh, I just went to the Natural History Museum yesterday, so I saw a lot of cool stuff. I'm trying to think. I'm going to do the Queen of... <laughs> I'm going to do the Queen... I'm going to do the Queen of Snakes. We're going to go with that. No, you know what? Let's do the Queen of Beasts. That's what I'm thinking keeps coming up in my head queen ant i'm gonna do the queen of beasts so let's go ahead and jump in on that so you guys you decided the queen of beasts yeah we're gonna do the queen of beasts so you guys uh in the chat someone else do the queen of sloths post in the group show us what glorious sloth queen you can come up with Uh, I sneeze here. <laughs> Excuse me. All right. So I want this uh, queen of beasts to be standing out here on some sort of a outcropping, kind of looking out. Just as usual, we're starting really loose, just laying down some groundwork. You don't want to get to the details yet. Work our composition a little bit, make sure we got things set up how we want it to, uh, to be in the frame. And then our beast is gonna be right here. So what I'm thinking for the queen of beast is some sort of uh, boar-like creature. Yeah, Honey Sirachi said it's the year of the boar. So I was gonna oh. say that it'd be awesome if you could uh, incorporate some elements of a yeah. boar in there. There we go, you're over the boar. Look at me. All 
Yeah, I took my son to the Natural History Museum yesterday, and he's really young. He's not even one years old, but he still really enjoyed it. It's it's pretty remarkable to see how much we're just intuitively obsessed with learning from the time we're born. Like, it just can't get enough. Just kind of makes the idea that without school, kids would just be dumb. It's just so absurd. It's so ridiculous that we kind of have to force kids to learn. Otherwise, they'd just be stupid just ridiculous What does the year of the boar mean? Does it have like any supposed, does it have anything tied to it? Like characteristics that are supposed to represent the year of the boar? Netstrife is asking, do you have to have an iPad to post in the group? Nope. You can uh, draw on paper and pencil if you want. You can do it in Photoshop. Um, whatever you want, just make sure that you stick to drawings, like sketches. I want the group to mostly be so people can look at each other's drawings. So don't post paintings or like uh, if you do a colored pencil drawing and it's you know like a really fleshed out drawing of colored pencil, don't post that. There's other groups you can post it and there's nothing wrong with that sort of art. I think that stuff is great, but just for this group, I wanna keep it to um, just drawings, just sketches so we can all help each other improve with our sketch art. So I have a comment here. Something that I enjoyed and was really good at was ridiculed by teachers because they just didn't like my style. What do you um, have to say about that? I would kind of want a little bit more information, like what was it exactly and what were they saying about it? Because sometimes I think our teachers are right. We just don't want to hear it. Um, so I'd kind of want a little bit more I can need a little bit more context before I could give you a solid answer on what I thought, but there are times when art teachers are kind of out of touch with the industry, I think, a lot of times, but they're not always wrong, so... Yeah, you have to give me some more information on the situation. So if you're willing to share. Okay, they say I was drawing really dark stuff like HR Geiger style, and they always said I need more color when it was aimed to be grayscale, for example. Um, yeah, I mean, it's... I would say his stuff is pretty dark. <laughs> um, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. You just gotta, what you gotta think about is what your objective is with your art. So if you're drawing art for just for the sake of self-expression, then draw whatever the heck you want. Doesn't matter what other people say. If you're trying to get a job, you're doing either illustration work or um, illustration work or concept art or things like that, you got to keep in mind that whether or not what you're producing is something that someone is going to want to replicate for their film or for their project or, you know, for their book cover. And most of the time they're going to want stuff in color because very few movies are in black and white these days and color has a huge impact on how audiences perceive the emotional, like what feelings 
um, something makes him feel. So if you're doing uh, only black and white, it's going to be kind of hard to get the type of jobs you're looking for if that's what you're going for. Um, Geiger, his stuff was extremely specific and he was actually, I believe, more of a fine artist who was approached by the Ridley Scott and the people who made Alien because they really liked his work. For those of you who don't know, uh, Geiger is the artist who designed the aliens for the movie Alien, the Xenomorphs. Um, his art is really dark, uh, has a lot of like eroticism mixed in. So um, definitely a unique style, but he was sought out because of his work was really good and really um, sought after by these guys. But that's not the typical case. That's kind of like an exception to the rule. Um, and you just want to be, just be aware, you know, like there, if that's what you're drawing, it's not going to have as wide of an appeal as if you do stuff with color in it. So those would be, those would be my thoughts. Like I said, if it's for self-expression, do whatever the heck you want. Hope that answers your question. Any other questions? I had an art teacher who gave me, who gave me a lot of advice that I was like, eh, like whatever, leave me alone. But now that looking back, it was actually good advice. I wish I'd listened to it more. Yeah, well, that goes along with this question that just came in. What artist influenced you over your life? Um, I would say out of artists that I knew personally, Hmm. I would say I'd probably break it down to three. The first one would be my mother. Um, I don't have, I mean, I don't think she was a particularly good mom overall, honestly. But I do think that one good thing that did come that she did was that she was uh, really supportive of my interests artistically and that ever since I was like a little kid, we would... Um, she would draw with me before, like, uh, you know, like when I was a little, like probably like four, maybe the younger, before I would go down for like a nap every day, we would sit at the kitchen table and draw. And um, she'd teach me how to draw different things. And she's somewhat artistic herself a little bit. And that I think made a big difference and got me interested in stuff like that and helped me be confident. And then um so she would be one i'd say kind of like the first one from when i was a kid and then i would say another one would be um bobby chiu he was kind of like my first introduction to digital art and that kind of like that whole world of concept art and actually before that me and my brothers would always watch the behind the scenes special features type stuff for like uh star wars movies or like uh tim burton's planet of the apes um was a big one that I really liked to watch um stuff like that and all of that stuff gave us a really deep fascination with like the concept art side of the movie industry and seeing all that sort of stuff and like the practical effects sort of things that they would make. And I think 
Um, that got me really excited when I started looking into that. I found Bobby Chiu's work and I felt like that was something I wanted to do. And so I'd watch a lot of his videos and look at his website all the time and study his art and try and kind of make replications of it. And then I sent him an email one time when I was really young and he emailed me back and was answered some of my questions I had about how, like, where do you go about learning digital art and things like that. And um, I would credit a lot to him. And then the third one would be my high school art teacher, Cynthia McKay. Um, mostly because she kind of gave me a place to go where she kind of let me have free reign. Like she didn't make me do all the assignments because I would spend so much, like, it wasn't like I was taking a credit to get like an easy A sort of thing. I was really like invested and was spending, oh, this is a queen. So no wiener here. Um, she, and she just was like really supportive um, in whatever I was interested in, what, what, what I wanted to do. And she would kind of tailor stuff to help me improve and uh, buy me, you know, if I wanted to try experiment with something new, she would buy me whatever supplies I needed to make that happen. She's just really awesome. And I, I wish I'd listened a lot more to some of her advice because she, uh, she would tell me things like, maybe you should try and add a little bit more of a background or like a shadow to ground it. Cause I do a lot of like kind of pop art style stuff, but it was mostly just because I was really bad at backgrounds. And so I made the excuse of like, oh, well it's pop art. So it doesn't have a background. Um, but yeah, she was a really big, she's a big influence for me and I still keep in contact with her, even though it's been like, oh, when did I graduate? It's been about six years. So I would, put her as one of my major influences that's awesome we've got uh a couple other questions is this the style of practice from reference then prompt the way you've always practiced uh yeah actually um i wouldn't usually like have a specific prompt but i would almost always i would draw like be studying something from reference and then after i'd study that for, I'm going to do a sketchbook. I've done a sketchbook tour before, but I would do a better one because it's kind of hard to see. And I want to talk more about like what exactly is going on. So just kind of flipping through, but I would study the anatomy of a certain animal or, you know, draw references of it. And then I would uh, try drawing like my own, like do some fantasy version of it or uh, draw a creature kind of based off of that. And then I would move on to the next thing, study that anatomy, whatever it was. So yeah, pretty much. All right. Sayoko says, I'm going to buy your digital painting lesson soon. Oh, awesome. Yeah. If you buy it this month, it's only 10 bucks. So everything, all my courses are $10 for the month of January, which is like 90% off on most of them. So. That's amazing. Awesome. Another question. Have you tried 3D sculpting? What's your opinion on 3D stuff? I um, I have tried 3D sculpting a long time ago when I was in high school because the resources were available to me. 3D sculpting software is like it's crazy freaking expensive um, for like industry sand stuff. I know there's free stuff out there like Blender, but I kind of want to learn on ZBrush since that's kind of what is the industry standard, but um, I that's actually kind of one of my goals for this year is to learn 3D. Because if you're a concept artist, uh, 3D being able to do 2D and 3D is a huge, huge plus um, in the industry. That would that's like kind of a big deal that would really help you out. Um, so yeah, I, I really like 3D work, I think it's really awesome. and because I like painting miniatures a lot and playing board games. Um, I kind of talked about this before, but I'm working on a board game of my own kind of in my spare time. It's a little bit on the back burner right now, but I do plan to make my own board game and I want to do all the art for it myself, um, including if I can, I might not be satisfied enough, but sculpting the miniatures would be something I'd be interested in doing. And um, so I got to learn 3D to be able to do that. So, yeah, I think 3D is awesome. I, I'm not particularly good at it, but I've 
Uh, I've messed with, around with it before. All right, another question. How long did it take you to learn how to digitally paint? I get really frustrated and stressed with it. Any tips to solve it? Um, well, uh, I'd be curious to know exactly like what you mean by, I know what he says, I guess probably gets so annoyed you ask me a question. I'm like, can you be more specific? But um, I don't know exactly what you mean by digital paint. Like, do you mean... Because I mean, like, that's, that's really broad. There's a bunch of different styles and like, what are you painting and stuff like that. Um, for me, I worked mostly traditional. I like dabbled like a little tiny bit using like online free software, like, uh, I think it was called Inkscape when I was like, in junior high. Um, and I used a mouse and I like painted a few things that weren't very good. Um, but then after that, I I still stuck mostly with traditional. I did a lot of watercolor stuff. And then probably like three years ago, is it until I really started doing digital? And it took me at first I was not very good. But I picked it up pretty quick, partly because I had a lot of experience already with traditional. And so a lot of the fundamentals regardless of what medium you're working in fundamentals of like form and, you know, the drawing aspects and light and color and all that stuff, um, sort of transfer over. And so it wasn't like, I didn't have to relearn how to draw everything. I just had to learn the new software, but I will say this, when I started, I had a, like a bamboo tablet where you can't draw on the screen and that made it really hard for me. I didn't really start making work that I felt like was good that I liked until I got an iPad Pro and I could see what I was drawing. Um, that made a big difference for me personally because I felt like when I was on the Wacom, there was just such a steep learning curve that I felt like I wasn't. A lot of times I felt like I was guessing with my lines and my marks that I was like, well, this is what I want in my head. And if anything turns out good, it's kind of like a happy accident um so getting a screen that i could see was a big game changer for me but things that you could do to help i took schools and courses was a big difference aaron blazes aaron blaze was a big influence in me learning how to do digital art um that helped out a lot so that would be that would be my advice take as try and consume as much course content as you can and actually do the assignments because there's a lot of people who like they'll buy the course or take the course and then they don't <laughs> do any of the stuff i was like yeah i watched it, it was really good Julie Riley is asking, so does, does this mean that for someone who is more accustomed to traditional a display tablet would work better um i just think it's more intuitive yeah i mean you can see it's like you're actually drawing paper instead of drawing on a tablet and having to look at the screen for me that disconnect is just so difficult to to get around i just had a really hard time but i mean it's not like there's a right or wrong answer draw whatever draw with whatever you think works good for you
really the biggest thing is just practice. It's gonna, it's gonna be sucky at first, but you just gotta do it. Whether you're doing traditional or digital, doesn't doesn't really change all that much. All right. Um, I think that's pretty good for our rough sketch. Let's go ahead and uh, let me just move this really quick and then we'll go ahead and move on to our cleaning it up. How much time we're at? Oh, yeah, I always feel like it's not enough time. But that's how we do it for an hour so we can get faster and better and better. All right. Any other questions in the chat? Not for right now. Okay, so um, this is um, adding to the question about digital painting, um, being a little bit more specific. Uh, Sayoko saying, I guess with painting in general, when adding colors to my drawing, they don't really blend. The drawing doesn't look as smooth as I want it to be. I hope this makes more sense. I hope this makes it more clear. Um, it would be, I looked at your stuff on Instagram, I believe. And it seemed like, if I'm remembering correctly, I didn't see a lot of blending. It seemed like you were doing more of like a cell shading style. So like a lot of flat, like flat colors. Um, it'd be so much easier if I could see an example of what you're talking about. Um, I think that though what you can do is instead of using just like a really opaque brush, use a brush that has a little bit of opacity lowered so that it can bleed through with the colors underneath. Um, that would help a lot. And um, sorry, I'm trying to draw and think about something. At the same time. <laughs> um, that would probably help you a lot is lowering the opacity on your brush so it's not so opaque. So you can see some of the colors underneath, like start with a start with a base color that is not going to be the main color of painting. So let's say you're going to be painting like a, a blue Oni, maybe start with a base color of green or red or something else, and then paint your base colors on top of that with a brush that has a little bit of opacity brought down so that just a little bit of that red shows through. It's going to bring a lot more like life and color and stuff to the, to the painting and it will also um yeah it'll, it'll bring a little bit more vibrancy and then when you blend your colors do the same thing don't use like a straight up hard edge opaque brush and then when you do shadows and lighting and stuff like that don't just this is a common mistake i see a lot of beginner artists make which is their lighting and their shadows they just go either use a darker version of their base color for their shadows or a um, vice versa, they use a lighter color of their base color. So they basically just are adding white or black to their shadows and their lights. And that looks so bad. It makes it look so um, like pasty or like muddy kind of. You wanna use color. So like if you're, this isn't a hard rule, it depends on the lighting situation exactly. But for example, when you're adding um, if you're doing light, if you're like painting the lighting for your object and your characters out in like a sunny environment, you're going to add a little bit of warmth to the color of your light. So instead of just moving it brighter in the whites, you're going to add it a little bit warmer as well. So it has a little bit more yellow in the light. And when you're doing the shadows, you're going to move it a little bit closer towards whatever the ambient lighting in your scene is. So if you're outside, for example, your primary light source is probably going to be this yellowish from the sun and your ambient light source is probably going to be blue from the fill light of the sky. Not always, like I said, these aren't hard festivals that you got to take into context the lighting situation itself. But um, 
adding color in that setting would make a big difference as well. I'd have to kind of see your work to tell you more specifically what's wrong or what you could fix, but yeah, that's what I'd say. And Austin, I'm sure in your courses on Udemy, you've got um, more in-depth advice and... Yeah, so the courses are pretty detailed. Most of them are about six hours long or more. And um, each course kind of covers a different topic. So like the Digital Painted Mega course is the most generalized one that goes over like the widest variety of things. But if you really want to learn like light and color, the light and color course obviously would be the one to go with. And that one really goes in depth on color theory and lighting. And that one would probably help you the most with um, painting light and color issues and um, blending those colors to make them look good. Um, I would check that one out if that's what you're struggling with. I think out of all my courses, I think the light and color one is the best one I've made. And I think it's the most important one to take, in my opinion. And I used a lot of stuff, um, a lot of the stuff in it, I learned from James Gurney, and especially his book on uh, color and light. It has a lot of information from the, that book that I that I had learned. What was the name of the artist that you just mentioned? James Gurney. James Gurney. He, um, James Gurney is the creator of Dinotopia. So if you guys ever read those books as a kid, they're really awesome. They have some great art in them. But yeah, James Gurney created Dinotopia. He's considered kind of one of the modern day masters of fantasy art. He works all traditionally, he does oil paintings. He's really good. He also does a lot of like paleo art for like National Geographic or um, like a lot of science magazines and stuff like that because he's his stuff just looks so good. He has such a good understanding of light. So I'm just mentioning to people now, um, just reminding them of some of the names that you've brought up in the live stream today. Some that uh, that I'm remembering are Bobby Chu, Aaron Blaze, and James Gurney. Yep. Adrian Smith is a, was an artist from Rising Sun as well. Adrian Smith. I would consider each of those artists uh, masters of what they do in their in their area of expertise. Well, we're about 15 minutes left. I'm not crazy about today's. Just ever, ever since yesterday, I just realized like, man, I need to do a lot more reference studies. It's been a long time. I just feel like uh, 
like hungry for it to do more reference studies and build that up. Even just the two sketches we did yesterday of chimpanzees, I was just like, man, give me such a better understanding of little tiny nuances that you don't pick up. Like the second one we did, for example, how he's kind of snarling and how his lip react responds with his nose and how it kind of like pushes up around the nostrils and how the teeth jut out from the, and how the lips pull back and stuff. It just is like, you get so much information from trying to draw something from reference than you do just by kind of looking at it. Like, I'm just looking at this thinking like, yeah, it's all right. It kind of looks like a cartoon though. Like if I had been able to do reference of a boar before I did this, or like some of these other animals, like a ram or a barbosaurus or whatever they're called, babarusa. It's like related to a warthog, but they have the tusks that kind of stick up through their snout, pierce their snout and curl up around their head. It, it would have just looked so much more realistic if I had done that. I'm just like, can't wait to do more reference tomorrow. Have you ever traveled to another country? If you have, do you feel like it influenced you and your art? You know what? I have not traveled to another country yet. I kind of grew up pretty like... Well, one, we grew up really poor. Um, like super pretty pretty poor, especially when I was a little kid. We had I wore like shoes with holes in them and all my clothes had holes in them and my mom made most of our clothes like out of like scrap fabric or stuff from the DI or like from like thrift stores or um like fabric she'd buy in clearance so like really ugly, <laughs> like horrible <laughs> patterned fabric and stuff because we were just so poor like i wore cloth diapers as a baby because we couldn't afford regular diapers because it's too expensive to just throw them away so we'd have to my mom would buy we would have we had cloth diapers that you have to like wash out every time they got pooped in so i didn't end up traveling really much as a kid and then when i got older i just yeah i never did but i would like to um it's something that I'm interested in doing in the next year or two. It's just hard when you have a little kid, when you have a baby. But Yeah, you have a little eight-month-old, is that right? Yep. it's awesome. What would you call a good artist? Um, I would say a good artist is someone who, one, can is good at conveying the message they're trying to convey that it comes across clearly what it is they're trying to do or say. And then also, or I guess their intention is what they're trying to do is well done. And um, so like, for example, if you're a fine artist and your intention is to make the meaning of your art interpreted to each individual so it's not clear then you can still be a good artist even though people might not understand what you're saying because your intention was to make it difficult mm -hmm. for them to understand you know mm -hmm. but um like for a concept dress for example if you're trying to make people feel scared or you know like emotional or whatever and you can convey that i would say that makes a good artist being able to get out what's in your head accurately as well as um Like, I don't know, like some might say, well, like, well, maybe I wanted my art to look that way or like it's supposed to look like that, which maybe it is, but I don't know what I'm trying to say. Like there's art that sometimes I'll critique artists, people ask for feedback and I'll be like, well, this isn't really working or this doesn't look very good. You should change this. And they're like, well, it's supposed to look like that. And it's like, okay, well, that's fine then if you want to look like that, but other people aren't perceiving it the way you want them to perceive it. it to them it just looks like a bad drawing um so if you can make the decisions you want and still have that message come across i think that's part of what makes someone a good artist i don't know i think in a lot of ways art is subjective but in a lot a lot of other ways it's really pretty objective i think um, cause you can say beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but skill isn't really in the eye of the beholder. That's pretty subjective on whether or not you understand the fundamentals and, you know, anatomy or how things work. So I don't know. We could probably talk a long time about that topic alone. It's a good question.
Any sites other than Google Images that you use to find good references? I actually pretty much never use Google Images, honestly. I don't think that... Um, it's this, this is what I don't like about Google Images is that it's it's just basically an algorithm generating stuff based off of like tags and things like that. I like Pinterest way more because Pinterest is curated by people who are looking for pictures for a specific purpose. It's curated by typically other creators, depending on who you're following or what tags you follow. So I like Pinterest because it almost always has better photos for reference and the images you find are almost universally way more appealing and um, interesting than the stuff that I find on Google images. So like I said, I think it was yesterday, if you follow me on Pinterest, I have all my boards are public so you can see all the references I pin. Um, I really like Pinterest for reference photos. And that's pretty much what I use exclusively just because it's, it's really convenient. Everything's right where I want it. So very rarely do I go to Google images. And he says, uh, Honey Sarachi says, I like Pinterest, but sometimes they don't have links to the original artists or photographers. True. Um, yeah. Valid point. <laughs> <laughs> I'd still, I still prefer it over Google, but. put some scratches on her back here like she's been in some fights and maybe not. so i just included a link to um your your pinterest boards oh, okay, cool. and everything so that people can quickly and easily check those out those are really cool there's tons of references there there you go you got line references D and D, wolf references, dinosaurs, all sorts of cool stuff. All right, how much time we have? About five, five minutes, minutes left. I just glanced at the chat and yeah, Karma, Aaron Blaze, man, he's got some really awesome stuff. Aaron Blaze used to actually be an, an a 2D animator for Disney and he worked on like Brother Bear, Lion King, the original Lion King. Um, he actually, I think he was like the director or co-director for Brother Bear um, and like the lead animator, I believe. Um, he also worked on Beauty and the Beast, but yeah. Um, yeah, that stuff is his stuff is really great. After he after basically after they shut down their two D animation department because they started doing exclusively three D for the most part, all their two D animators were let go, and a lot of them just kind of went out of work and stopped working as artists. But he kind of adapted and transitioned into digital, and um, he now he does a lot of digital stuff and his stuff is amazing he travels to africa a lot and does like actual like takes photographs of animals in the wild to do studies of so his animal studies are awesome he has he also has a really great youtube channel i'd recommend checking out and really great courses courses are a lot shorter like like an hour long usually and they're about 20 bucks each but 
Um, I'd say they're totally worth it, even if you can only get like one of them. All right, well, I think I just want to remind people to post their work on Instagram using the hashtag sketch grind, right? And on the Facebook page. Yep. Yeah, let's see. Uh, I'd love to see what kind of queens you came up with. If someone did like a sloth queen, I think that'd be fun to check out. And today, the uh, Instagram group is going live. So make sure you post your hashtags. And I, if I like it, I'll be sharing it for uh, everyone to see. So. All right, well. He turned out all right. I really am. He was a person that like, oh, I have people was like, what are you talking about? That looks good. And it's not that I think it looks bad. It's that it's not what I pictured in my head, which is kind of what I was talking about when I was talking about what makes a good artist is whether or not you can put out on paper what you have in your head. And in my head, I was imagining this thing looking pretty realistic with like a really realistic face and clearly resembling a warthog. And it's reminiscent of it, but I feel like it still looks a little bit too cartoonish. I think from here back besides the tail i think looks how i imagined it and then the head i'm like yeah gets the idea across but i got some work to do but that's why we're doing this so we can all get better at drawing like i said i feel like i've taken too big of a break and focused too much on painting i want to really hone my drawing skills again so it's only the first week um, which I believe this is this is a sixth one. So tomorrow will be we'll have done this for a whole week, and I feel like I've already gotten better. Um, felt some of the rust kind of start to fall away, and uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow at 10 a.m. Ready to uh, draw again. I'm just gonna take a quick look at the chat, see what you guys some of you guys said. Two people joined in on your live stream. Hey, you know what? Two is better than zero. Sacco, good job. Um, oh, there's one more question. Was that, yeah, the one, the last question uh, was, How does your wife handle your passion for art? Yeah, she doesn't mind, she's fine with it. Um, because I work from home and I can work on my own schedule, I'm not like grinding away on freelance stuff all the time or working at a studio. My schedule is really flexible, so I get to spend a lot of time with my family. I don't think my wife is ever like, You never spend enough time with me just because. Um, I'm so available for her and my son. So she's never had, never really had an issue with it. I mean, before I don't really do it much anymore because I, I don't go anywhere anymore. I still go places, but like, I don't have like a day job I have to go to, but I used to take my sketchbook or my iPad with me everywhere all the time. And I was always, uh, always drawing in it. Every, everywhere I went, like if we'd go to church, I'd take it or if we'd go to the bank or like always have it. So um, she doesn't ever really have a problem. Um, but yeah, Sloth Queen, awesome. I'm excited to see what you guys did. You're saying I did a Sloth Queen, but I don't have Instagram. Well, post in the Facebook group. Um, great work today. Thanks for the stream. All right. Awesome. Well, thanks, guys. Have a great one, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.